Today we will talk about how to make a perfect union type. So first I will talk a little bit about JSON and the current landscape of data structures in the internet. Then I will uh, shortly debrief the history of typing of dynamic languages, which is probably interesting for those of you who use TypeScript, for example, but that's not the only example. Then I will describe type-like as a framework for creating union types and possibly intersection types in the future. And I will give examples of implementation. Finally, I will end with summary. So this is current landscape of data formats in the internet. So we see a strong position of XML that steadily becomes weaker and weaker. You also see uh, that CSV format is quite old, but it's still, it's still growing in use. To the surprise of many, because it's so easy to parse and so easy to exchange the tabular data in it. And by the way, in many institutions, spreadsheet is still the user interface of choice, right? Not only because they do accounting, but because it is most popular of small database applications in the world. Yes, Excel spreadsheet. But nevertheless, even if we count some esoteric poor formats like protocol buffers, out of all meta formats that can contain arbitrary data, so I'm not counting like specialized formats like GIFs and MOVs and MPEGs, right? MKVs that are only for special types of content, but universal data format that you use for interchange of different kinds of data. So out of these formats, the JSON has been in, in, the most dominant format from 2014 afterwards, or even 2013 afterwards. Why is it so? One thing, because it is the most popular format for exchange between uh, the browser, the client, and the backend. But also, nowadays, it's most popular format for exchange of data with web APIs. And this trend is expected to continue. I didn't have money to do research beyond 2017, so I just quote some people that did this research. But nobody really expects radical changes in this landscape at the moment. JSON will continue to dominate. How JSON looks like. So you basically have arbitrary uh, dictionary, which is basically key value pairs, or uh, an array, or string, or number, or boolean, or null. Is it fair to consider null its own type? With arbitrary nesting. No metadata about where it comes from, what it contains, and is this number uh, maybe floating point or integer? It just doesn't happen. But it's still used because it's easy to read. It's easy to parse on the back end and front end. Most languages easily parse it, and it's not too complicated, as opposed to XML. So we can easily encode it in any language we know. This is an example of data structure in Haskell that describes JSON values. However, if we have a result from Web API, then we don't want to really parse it manually from this data structure, right? Because usually we have always the same object with the same fields that just contain different content. We want to be warned, though, when this format changes. So we have different field names with content that instead of a number becomes a string, right? And the problem is how we are presented with this information. We basically download a few example answers from Web API, and usually the, the current state of our development schedule is, ah, uh, you have this example, uh, process it, right? 
not much documentation. There is open API, but it's extremely limited and doesn't include all the features that you would like to describe a full data type. So it's most applicable to simple use cases. There is JSON schema, very infrequently used. So we basically are sinking in the deluge of semi-structured data again with no schemas and no metadata that would allow us to describe it. What do we do it with it? So we can try to automatically infer the type of the data and if we infer the type in Haskell, we also infer how to write the parser and pretty printer for it. And there is related work. There are people that try to do it in other languages. Uh, usually after the first prototype, with expect, except for people that try to treat ex unstructured or semi-structured XML, which did it uh, slightly before, because that, that's when the XML was popular. So the XML people are excused and the corresponding Castagna set-based framework for uh, finding the type for arbitrary XML document without schema. Of course, with XML document, it, this task is somewhat simpler because all the elements are labeled by what they are supposed to convey. Now, F-sharp type providers and quick type are solutions that appeared afterwards, after JSON auto type, and use ad hoc type inference system. What we would like to have is a framework that will allow us to make this inference from JSON examples to type and parser and pretty printer, of course, that would be decidable, would be sound, and uh, maybe even enjoy subject reduction. That's the usually what we require of type system. At the same time, it's a bit strange because when we add more, more examples of data structure, we may reach this case that we expect any JSON content within a certain field. If we have a field that has no content known, only null, we can expect it to be sometimes non-null. So we need to take care of that. And the, the motivation is, of course, that of API. These are typical examples from the wild. For example, API argument is an email, which means it's passed as a string, but it's not arbitrary string. It may be email and only correct email. So we, it needs to be validated at client side. The other example is for pagination. The page size determines number of results and the results on the output. It's integer and it should be in range between 10 and 10,000. Another example. It is a string, but it contains correct ISO 8601 date that you can pass and should pass and should warn when it becomes no longer a date. So this is how we would encode these types in Haskell. An email or, a day or an integer or a date. There may be also a record that is either empty or has a page size. And then we would encode it as maybe integer. Even more complex example is that we have two types of records, one with messages and the others with errors. They have different fields, so we should recognize which type of record we have from these many examples and accordingly uh, split it into two types of constructors. Another example is that we may have alternative types inside. So for example, example may be either string or integer, either number of registered uh, objects or an under identifier of a singleton object. <laughs> That's very particular web API. I'm not entirely sure why they invented it this way, but well. Next example is that of 
different treatment of arrays in JSON. Sometimes JSON arrays are actually genuine arrays with the objects of the same type, and sometimes errors, uh, arrays are used to pass the relations. So basically, each array contains the columns, each of different type, and within the column, the type matches, right? And you have multiple rows here. So you would like this to be a list of rows, basically. Another example is map of identical objects. You can interpret the map as an object with different fields of different type, types, or you can see that each field has the same type, right? In here, it's particularly apparent. So we can use this to make it a dictionary from, in this case, hex hash to an object type. Right, so instead of something like this, we would rather have the mapping type. These are all special cases. They are so complex that they actually may require something that looks more like machine learning than type inference. In certain cases, we may keep the evidence for two different representations of each of them and only decide at the end what it is most likely to be, depending on the strongest evidence. So basically the goals are to detect unexpected format deviations that makes our further processing in Haskell invalid, detect the need of program updates, of course, find a minimal containing set, which is basically a proxy for the type, to preserve information content from all the examples that we have. Guarantee correct operation. When we have a parsed data type, it should be always parsed if it is conforms to the same structure. And uh, for those that are fans of category theory, we can treat inference as contravariant functor. I think I will skip on detailing what I mean, but if you are interested, please come after the talk, right? So basically, we have info information fusion monoid that basically takes things that are information, merge them, and make sure that the information is preserved. Mempty here is no information, so nothing known about the object. It can be used either for unification or anti-unification. In case of union types, it's anti-unification or generalization. In case of classical hindley milner types, that would be unification. Now we have type class that we call type-like, that is monoid. It has uh, equality and show classes just for the convenience of quick check testing. It's not necessary from a mathematical point of view. But we will talk about equivalences as way of describing laws, and because of this, we will keep this. Because all the laws in this work have been also tested as quick check tests. And sometimes they have been violating, and most of the in most of the cases, quick check actually detects that. So that's also a very good example of how to use laws from mathematics to drive your uh, program implementation and do agile testing. Then we have a kind of beyond set for some examples of type like that. In case of Hinlein Milner types, it's basically an error set. So when you get an error, then everything is typed by error. That's our basic assumption, right? In the case of union types, beyond class is class of all JSON documents. Because union types, the way they work, they need to preserve this conservative uh, assumption that we need to be able to type any JSON document, right? We do not require independence, which is a trend that you see in type theory, by the way, recently in quantitative type theory. So we are compatible with this quantitative type theory, but I will never explain why. It's just a useful feature. <laughs> 
So we have a type class that basically describes it all in a very simple way. We have inference operation that takes the value and generates the type for it. And we have type checking operation that takes the type and checks that the value matches the type, right? This is opposite order to the usual way that we de describe the value is typed by type operator because this is a Boolean function, function, right? And there are then laws that describe how this type class works. And these laws are sufficient to ensure that we have correct composition of type likes and that we can decompose or compose two type likes into a different type like, right? So basically, these union types are all type likes that can be composed freely. Basic thing is that if we have no information, we can type nothing, right? So no value matches type that has no information. The next thing is that if we have beyond value, then it types everything. It's basically kind of either an error or in case of JSON, it's all JSON documents. This is beyond. So in the case of JSON, beyond is not really beyond reproach, it's beyond further inference. You can have to go farther, right? Now when we check something, some value with type one, and then we add information to this type one, then with this added the information, we can still type this value, right? So the information is preserved. Basically information future in monoid in in case you've been interested in listening to my other talks. This goes in both directions. Then uh, when we check something that has been inferred for the value, then it has to check this value. That's preservation. Of course, besides that, we have the typical properties of the monoid, which is associativity and uh, MEMPTY as a neutral element. This is a nice diagram because people like house diagrams. If you are not absolute enthusiast of category theory, then we can skip it. If you are absolute enthusiast of category theory and commutativity diagrams, please look it up on archiv. This paper is on archiv. Now let's talk about what people like the most, which is show it as a Haskell code, right? I guess most of you, if, even if they don't know Haskell, they can read this code because it's so similar to many other languages, right? So the, the simplest information would be the information about presence or absence of information on the certain position of the type. So for example, if we have empty array, then we have no information about what is inside array. But if we have at least one element, we know that there is element in this array. That's the, the, the most simple way of telling. And why do we do it? Because when we compose the union types or compose type likes to make a union type for entire uh, JSON document, we'll have different uh, subclasses of values. One of these subclasses is contains Boolean, doesn't contain Boolean. Contains null, doesn't contain null. Or we have evidence that it contains null. We have no evidence that it contains null. We assume that it doesn't. Then for the number constraints, we work around the problem that JSON by itself doesn't distinguish integers and floats. And again, we can merge this. Here we have basically semi-lattice structure where, where NC float is beyond, and nc never is empty, right? So no information. And integer is in between. And we basically check whether this number is integer by checking that its base exponent is zero. So it has no dot, basically, or dot with no digits afterwards. Now, sometimes we'll compare different evidence. In this case, we add another 
description of the type like that is type like with associated cost that tells us what kind of evidence is stronger than the other. Basically, cost of the type. We basically picked it the, the type that is simplest or has the lowest cost. Because we assume that there is evidence that people prefer a simple description over complex ones. And here is the constraint for the JSON dictionary. It can be one of things. It can be either mapping, in which case we have one constraint on the keys and one constraint on the values. On the values, arbitrary union type keys, arbitrary string type. and associated uh, implementation. Or it can be a record, right? Then it, it describes an object. Then record, RC top, is basically a record with any possible field. RC bottom is a record with no fields, empty record in JSON. Or record constraint, which is basically hash map from text to union type. In this case, we assume that this texts are constants for the field labels, and then there is union type for each field. Now, when we check the dictionary, we basically check it whether it is uh, simultaneously that it is consistent with the either record constraint or mapping constraint. So we basically always keep the information in both cases. Object constraint is mapping case or record case. The same we do for the array constraints. We either have no information, that's a special case, or we have a constraint that describes the, how it is defined as a row type, so basically for tabular case, or as array element type. Then we define these type likes accordingly. It's always uh, easy to test these implementations because we already know the laws of type like. If the law of every single type like is preserved, then the composition will be also preserved. In many cases, as you see, these compositions are done automatically. So we could do it generically because basically we merge for the, the merge operation, the information fusion operation just fuses information from both uh, fields in the information record. And then basically union type we can compose by using this kind of uh, tensor product on monoids and by extension type likes that are defined by these monoids by basically decomposing disjoint possibilities the description of the null, this is basically in presence or absence of the null, presence or absence of the bool, because if we see true, we assume there may be false. If we see false, we assume there may be true. So presence or absence here. Or number constraint that I described first, after the presence constraints, or string constraint. It's very similar, it also accepts dates and emails as special cases array constraint or object constraint. This is kind of disjoint or parallel uh, composition because for each constructor in the description of JSON, it has a different bin for the information there. And then we merge it in a standard way again, within these bins. The same for the type cost. Now we can do even more if we want to compare how strong the uh, evidence is, we can, for example, count the number of examples that we used for each type like. And this is an example of quantitative or non independent union type. So to summarize, we have monoid-based exposition of union type inference, and we can also use it in future for intersection types or for inlay milner we have type like that behaves like non lossy learning, and we can allow, have laws that correspond to that. We see that generic monoid and generic monoid composition and decomposition suffices to describe it in most cases. 
And we also have ex easy extensibility because there are very few type systems that can be consistently built from bo bottom up, from smaller types on smaller types to types on larger types, right? Usually type system is all or none transaction. And indeed, F sharp uh, type providers work this way. You basically define a type provider for entire JSON uh, realm. You cannot just add, or maybe we have JSON and we add dates. And when maybe we add special treatment of hashes or hexadecimal numbers in strings, right? Here, because of this decomposition, we have this modular structure and we can go further and further. And the laws are very liberal, so they, uh, they allow us in future to implement both quantitative, non-independent type systems and usual union type systems. And this will be included in the next version of JSON Autotype. JSON Autotype is in production and used by many people, but unfortunately that means that the process of upgrading to the next version takes a while. So, do you have any questions? Or suggestions how to improve your presentations? <laughs> questions? So you like encoded the type theory in Haskell type classes, or? Uh, I encoded union type theory. So what we don't have from usual type theory here is functions. Because we didn't need it for JSON. JSON is flat data structure, first order, no functions. We can do it, and indeed Castagna did it, in our framework that would be possibly nice, but we didn't yet done, we didn't that do it. That, that would be the next step. Uh, what about object structures or object references if you have circular data structures and things like this? So, that's a thing in JSON Autotype that I didn't mention uh, because I wanted to focus on, on type-like framework here. But we have certain post-processing post stage. So basically, at this post-processing stage, we don't necessarily hold uh, the exact laws. Instead, we use certain heuristics. One heuristic is that we compare all the objects that we have and if there is 90% of the same fields, we assume this is the same type. And this is how we figure out that things like this data structure share the same object, right? So either mappings or this, or if it would be nested data structure, that's more appropriate. Yeah, and this is also how we uh, handle net references. There are examples in, I think, YouTube APIs that show it. So in the test suite, basically there are a lot of references that need this treatment, yes. Because our, our goal is not just to accept, of course, this JSON structure, but restore what it really meant. Without references, it would be impossible. But 90% feel uh, keys heuristics for objects is sufficient. Okay, any other questions for Michal? Oh, up there. And also just uh, make sure to mark uh, the evaluation for the talk. There's an iPad going around. What did you mean by subject reduction? I don't think there was any notion of uh, normalization or reduction. So, so here, yeah, I skipped over that. 
here you would not have subject reduction in JSON itself, right? You would have subject reduction of program that works on JSON and is defined in Haskell. So basically, when you have this type like description of a JSON object, then you would like to preserve certain properties when you reduce the, the basically evaluate Haskell program over it. So our assumption is basically the Haskell program cannot go wrong. Yeah. And when it's correctly passed, then it will continue to, to, to give the right result or at least expected result. Uh, it's in this case, because we translate to type language, it's trivial to prove. It would be harder to prove in non-type language. Then you need additional conditions. Thank you. OK, any other questions for Michal? All right, thank you very much.